Hello everyone, welcome back, welcome to my channel. My name is Ren and I make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandom things. And I was gonna make a video every day in June for Pride Month and once again, the plans to do so were foiled by my body. <laughs> I am a uh, chronically ill disabled human being with a body that decides it wants to fall apart consistently. So sometimes I make plans, for example, to make a video every day in June. Um, and every year I realise that making video every day is not something my body likes. This month plans are foiled by my heart and also my brain, uh, which are two very vital organs. <laughs> that I need. Um, but no, I was in, uh, I went to, had to go to A&E, was in hospital, had some appointments, and then I was going away to see some friends, um, which was very exciting. And I had planned to film videos leading up so that videos could still go up that week. But then the week before was when I was in and out of the hospital. So I didn't have time to film videos for that week and the week I was away. And then I was away, so I didn't have time to film those videos. Um, and then when I got back, I had more appointments and now I'm in isolation and have multiple hostel appointments over the next couple of, well, I say a couple of weeks, it's like in a couple of days and then next week. And then I have a, a surgery, like a big surgery. So it's been a lot. <laughs> Fun. However, I am here today to bring you a review, like the most exciting review I've probably ever done in my life, like ever. So a couple of videos ago, I made a video in my Pride Month videos, which was five reasons why you should read Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Elias Sands. My favourite book ever in the whole entire world. I've spoken about it a lot. If you're new here, hello, this is my favourite book in the world. On October 12th, 2021, Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe will be receiving a sequel. The sequel is called Aristotle and Dante dive into the waters of the world. Here it is, here's the cover. I made a whole video reacting to the cover and the title and uh, the, the synopsis, I'll link that down below. Um, Simon and Schuster sent me a copy of the book. In all my years of making booktube videos, in which it has been like eight years at this point, it's been a long time. I, I have never received more of an exciting email. I have done some really cool things. I have worked with some really cool people and publishers and of course I have been grateful for every single one of them. Every single one of them. But when I tell you that nothing, nothing on this earth made me feel the way I felt when I got an email saying that I was going to be receiving this book. Like, I cried for a bit and then kind of got it on, I had it on my Kindle, it's not a physical copy, it's an e, e, it's an e-arc. Kind of just sat there, kind of just stared at it for a bit because not only do I have the arc, like I have it, like it comes out in October, I have it now, it, it just doesn't feel real. Like I have read the sequel, I am living in a world where I have read the Aristotle and Dante sequel. I've read it, I've done it, like I've read the book, like and I, it still doesn't feel real to say I've read the book. I went book shopping with my friend the other day and like it was on, it was in Waterstones, like the book was, it was in Waterstones, the first one. And I was like, I've read the sequel, I've read the sequel, I've done it, I've read the sequel. Um, so I'm going to do a review of the sequel today. Obviously it is a non-spoiler review uh, because I can't, I can't talk about actual content of the book as of right now. Can't do that because I can't spoil it because it's not out yet. So this is a non-spoiler review. I also do ask that if you are also someone who is really, really lucky enough to receive a e-arc, whether it be an e-arc or even a physical arc, because I know in some countries they are doing physical arcs, um, please, in the comments, feel free to scream with me, but please keep it non-spoilery. I'm sure that you will have been told by receiving a copy to keep it non-spoilery, but please keep it non-spoilery because obviously we don't want to spoil it for people who haven't read the book yet. This has been one of the most anticipated releases for years and years and years since I found out there was going to be a sequel when it was still in its early ages, like 
early ages like early days is what I meant to say um so and I know that that is the case with so many other people this book is very anticipated it is very hyped and I really do not want to spoil that for anybody I have agonized over how to do this review and how to word this review because I just really do not want to spoil it for anybody and I really want people to get the full experience when they read this book for the first time but here is my here is my review of Aristotle and Dante Dive into the Waters of the World by Benjamin Elias Sands. So, so, <laughs> so for those that may not know what even Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe is, Aristotle and Dante discovers the secrets of the universe. It's set in 1987 in El Paso in Texas and it focuses on 15 year old Aristotle Mendoza and one day he decides to go swimming and he can't swim and at the swimming pool he meets 15 year old Dante Quintana who offers to teach him how to swim and they seem like complete opposites and then they really like hit off and it's their friendship and relationship and it is an absolutely phenomenal book like I said it is my most favorite book in the whole entire world ever nothing has ever come close to beating it like it's my favorite it's my favorite and the sequel is set directly after this book ends and follows Ari and Dante further on their journey and their life and dealing with the last year of high school and dealing with the 80s and, the, and like the AIDS pandemic in America and seeing the way that gay men were treated. I think like it's a really important discussion like so many people died because it was seen as something that gay people got and like let's just be real. Governments didn't massively you know care and this kind of follows on kind of the secret the secretness like the secretive aspect of that and the way that people were treated and if they died of AIDS it would say that they died of something else and you know like in El Paso uh like in Texas as a whole like homosexuality was illegal until 2003. It was a, it was a really hard and difficult time um, and this kind of focuses on that and it focuses on their struggles. First of all I really want to talk about the writing of the book. So I have very much spoken out about the way that the first book is written and that I believe that Benjamin writes in a very 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 specific way. It's a way which is very rare and a style which I don't see very often and the thing that I find when I'm reading his books is that it's very very poetic and very kind of almost lyrical but a very specific form of that and this book I feel like showcased that phenomenally. Like this book, here it is, there it is, uh, is phenomenally done in the sense that we really see like how his how his writing has developed but also the style that he has I but like this book to me felt very 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 poetic the way that the story is told Ari's thoughts um kind of the things that he's experiencing like kind of the way that the story is delivered is really 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 lyrical and really poetic and I really liked that and I would actually argue that it probably felt more like that in this book than it does in this book um uh, like I would say so and and I just think that you know obviously there is quite a lot of time like between them like as in written wise uh plot wise <laughs> no um but yeah I also really want to talk about Aristotle and Dante I feel like I have to talk about them like I I can't do this review and not talk about how much I loved their character developments I think but for completely different reasons in this book so for Ari without getting too spoilery and talking about specifics because obviously I can't do that in October I will have a very much longer in-depth discussion and spoilery discussion but Ari in general I feel like really 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 grew as a character in book one he is really really closed off and I have said before about the way that the story is told in that he is keeping things not only from the reader but also from himself he wants to keep parts of himself a secret from himself because he doesn't want to acknowledge that and it's only near the end of the book where he starts to kind of open up and starts to kind of accept aspects of his life. In the sequel because he is more open we are learning so much more about him and he is accepting so much more about himself and he's opening up more he's opening up to other people he's he's kind of like putting himself out there and really kind of accepting himself and his life and things that for so long he had ignored and like there's people around him which suddenly as a reader we're aware of because he's allowing himself to acknowledge these people and I really really loved I loved that like I really relate 
to that. Ari is a character that I have related to since book one. Like, I really understand that kind of struggle of keeping things from yourself, keeping things from other people, and kind of just being really uh, angry. Like, I'm feeling so lost and confused and like trying to figure out who you are but then not wanting to like do that like I, I feel that like I really related to that especially teenage me like I really struggled with quite a lot of similar things that Ari struggles with and so the feelings that he felt when he's opening up and there's more people really was something which I resonated with because I remembered those feelings and I remember feeling kind of so much more open and free and the people around me that did that and how good that felt so I really really loved seeing that like I loved that journey I really loved that there were old characters like Gina and Susie who I absolutely love and I love them even more in this they are phenomenal characters and obsessed with them like Oh my god, like, they are even better in this book than I think they are in Ari and Dante, like, like, the first one. <laughs> They're both called Ari and Dante, like, I need to stop saying that. And there are new characters. Benjamin mentions one of them by name on his Twitter. I won't go too much into who Cassandra is because I don't want to spoil it, but I loved Cassandra. Phenomenal. Won't, like I said, I won't go too much into it, but Benjamin is right. Cassandra is a character that you will absolutely fall in love with phenomenal and also Dante in book one Ari is kind of keeping lots of things to himself and he looks at Dante as kind of like when you read it he's kind of looking at him and Dante is like really sweet and like I don't want to say like perfect because he's not perfect and I don't think Ari ever kind of paints the picture of him being perfect but because Ari is so much more open with himself and with other people and is letting other people in this book is again in Ari's perspective but we are seeing a lot more of Dante and we are seeing Dante in so many different like so many different ways this time because Ari is being more open and more like, receptive to people and different things so I really felt in this that we got to see Dante in much more of like as like less of a 3D character and more of like a 4D character like we saw so many extra facets of Dante's personality and who he is that it really kind of showed the like like his kind of like angry side and upset side and stubborn side and we just got to see so much more of him as a character and I just feel like he was so much more rounded and like more of a person because like obviously in this he's a whole person and he's phenomenal and he's Dante and I love him but in this because Ari like has Dante around in different ways and in so many like a variety of ways we are seeing more of Dante's personality you know like when you get to know someone and you're friends with them and it can take like a couple of months or like a year or so to realize so many different aspects of their personality and who they are and I really feel like that was the case in this book like we saw so much more of Dante and I really liked that because it kind of painted him as less like it just kind of painted him as like more of a I don't know we just we, we got to see more of him and I really liked it this is also something which I feel like I can say um but basically in my theory video I there's like in the summary it says about Ari experiencing a tragic loss um obviously I can't go into detail about what that is because spoilers but Benjamin tweeted this and I do just want to put this out there because I kind of theorized this in my like reaction video um which like I said is linked down below and I do just want to say it's not the case and I think he is getting lots of questions about it and lots of people are thinking the same thing um, and obviously I wouldn't have said anything because I don't want to say anything spoilery but because he has tweeted it I can put it on here and that's what he said um so I do just want to say that because that's not the case and I am also getting comments about me having a moment of oh my god what if it's Dante <laughs> you're good for everyone that's terrified about Dante dying so I just want to do that but I did really love the way that his character was portrayed in this book and I really liked it um I liked seeing the way that kind of so many different things were dealt with in this book things with Ari's family um his sisters I think that that was like that was really cool I really loved that um I really loved like Dante and his family and obviously Dante's mom was pregnant at the end of this one and 
love it um and i also just want to say that there's like conversations between ari and dante which i think are really important and really kind of realistic but also really like hard hitting realities of being a queer person there are some really like hard hitting moments of those struggles and the things that these boys are dealing with which I just think was so well done and so phenomenal like some of the struggles just like little things and then really big things and then moments of being able to accept that yourself and then accept that in front of other people and like moments of coming out and dealing with so many different aspects as well as obviously dealing with this in the 80s when the AIDS pandemic was such a massive thing and the attitudes towards that not great awfully like absolutely shockingly handled with like the way that governments dealt with AIDS was absolutely awful and, and I truly do believe that there could have been medication and ways to deal with it sooner if it hadn't been seen as the gay disease and this kind of really deals with that and it has people who exper have experienced that loss and have lost family members uh, because of AIDS and the way that that's kind of stigmatized and the way that they are treated because of that. It also really deals with kind of different attitudes with coming out and different attitudes of different people um, and sort of family life and kind of also those struggles within yourself. Like people that are straight and cis, like I don't think you fully realize that it's just a constant thing. It's not like a one-off coming out situation and then it's fine. Like you are constantly trying to be like, this is my existence because your existence is never seen as the default existence. And that was done really well in this and that constant kind of thing. But also obviously, like I said, this is again, dealing with it in the eighties in a state where it's illegal in the height of the AIDS pandemic. So I think that that was done really well and I really loved those explorations within the book. I, th I think that it was done really well. Ultimately, I gave this book 4.5 out of five stars. This has five out of five stars. This is my, this, this is still my favorite out of this one. I loved this one. However, the ending did confuse me a little bit. I got to about 94%, but like really loved it. And there was lots of stuff and I have read it multiple times now. Like I, I think I've read it like three, three and a half times. Like I wanted to really make sure and really make notes and kind of really make sure that this review was good. But the ending was like, it just confused me a little bit. I don't know if I fully feel like I am somewhere like there was so much growth from everyone and so much so much development within the book and then I feel like the ending was just a little bit like it just didn't completely fit the growth of that was seen throughout the book in my opinion it didn't completely fit with the rest of the novel. The book was like five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars. And then the ending was just kind of like, okay, 4.5. But overall, I absolutely loved the sequel. I'm beyond grateful, beyond lucky. Like I have realized that being able to have this book is a massive privilege, massive, massive. Like I am so grateful to Simon and Schuster for letting me have this book early. Like I cannot, I, I I can't believe it happened. I can't believe they gave it to me. Like, I genuinely was a little bit in shock. And to know that I have read this book, amazing. Obviously, my physical copy, I, I think I've pre-ordered like five already. I've got like two paperbacks, two hardbacks. I've got like US, UK for both. Um, and then I have the box set. There's a box set and I love the box. It has the first one and the second one. So I've ordered that as well. Um, so yeah, as you can tell based on that, absolutely bloody loved it. That is my non-spoiler review of Aristotle and Dante Dive Into the Waters of the World. I absolutely loved it. I really, really hope that you guys love it as well when it comes out. It is out October 12th, 2021. It is able to be pre-ordered now. And also you can get this sparkly holographic -y new UK edition, which Simon and Schuster also sent to me, um, which is this is a new one. And it also has this one, um, which is a Waterstones edition, which has blue, blue pages. And then this is the other one, which just doesn't have blue pages. Um, but yeah, Simon and Schuster also sent me this one. This came out at the end of May and it is in bookstores now and it's super shiny um, and metallic-y and I love it.
Like I said, I make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandom things, so if you want to stick around and join us, feel free to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell, and as usual, all the links to my other social medias and also my Stranger Things podcast, because I have a Stranger Things podcast, it's called Hawking Sue Copy, and I co-host it with my friend Emily, and we talk about all things Stranger Things, which is also in the description as well, so if you want to come check that out, then that's where you'll find us. Thank you so much, I hope you're doing really, 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 really well, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!